Hello everyone, my name is Catalyst, and welcome back to the How To Not Suck series, the grammatically incorrect series that teaches you how to play Battlefield. As you may know, before Season 1, we went through every single specialist in the game, going through each one, learning how to most optimally play them, and learning their quirks and tricks before suggesting loadouts for them. And now that Season 1 has released, we have a brand new specialist to learn and review, so thus, the series must return. But in case you are new here or missed any other episodes in this series or are interested in watching them, there will be a link to the playlist in the description below. Today's episode is going to be covering Liz, the mobile human Sam turret whose bark is much bigger than her bite. Liz is a specialist that I think everybody thought was going to be super overpowered when we learned the details of her, but after investing some time into playing her, I think that she is a very weak specialist and is probably by design that she is so weak. In today's video, we will go over her G84 TGM self-guided TV missile. Wow, that is a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> when the best time to use it is and how to best utilize her on the battlefield. If you're ready, I'm ready, let's get to work. For those of you that may be new here, I try my best to not let my personal feelings about how good or bad a specialist is dictate how I teach in this series, because in the end, the series is called How to Not Suck and not what Catalyst thinks of each specialist, but sometimes the lines are blurred a little bit, and I can't really talk about a specialist unless I talk about some of their downfalls. And that's something that we're going to have to do once again today with Liz, especially because she's the new specialist, everybody is playing her, and thus her productivity is a little bit skewed there is this misconception that she is overpowered and i would kind of like to dispel that notion a bit with today's video is she the worst specialist in the game no but we'll go over a couple of reasons today as to why i think she isn't as strong as people think she is but before we can talk about that we've got quite a bit to talk about with her tv missile Liz's ability is her G84 TGM TV missile, which for my sanity and the length of the video we will just call the G84. The G84 fires a TV missile that allows the player to control a rocket and take out enemy vehicles or enemy players if you direct impact them. The G84 spawns with two rockets and regenerates ammo on a 22 second cooldown. Liz is the only specialist in the game in which her primary ability restricts the use of other gadgets, so while using Liz you cannot run a stinger or or a recoilless rocket launcher as your gadget. Depending on the type of vehicle that you are facing off against, it takes a different amount of hits for the G84 to kill it. The Niper takes one hit, the Stealth Copters and Attack Helicopters take two hits, the Super Hind and Condor take four hits, and Tanks and Wildcats also take four shots to kill with the G84. When using the missile, you can press E to exit the TV, and the rocket will continue the trajectory that you last left it on until it reaches the 450 meter range. So you can use the G84 like a longer range recoilless launcher, getting out of the TV early when it's on target towards a stationary vehicle or player. You can also boost the speed of your rocket, but note that it does not increase the damage, it just gets you to your destination quicker. However, the missile can be destroyed by enemy gunfire and rockets, so keep that in mind. Liz's passive ability is called Armor Hunter, which reveals injured tanks and vehicles. It's important to note that this reveals injured vehicles for her and only her, and the range at which the vehicles are revealed can be a little bit varied. In testing, I found that land vehicles such as tanks and wildcats were only revealed to me up to 200 meters. Past that, their auras disappeared. For air vehicles, it's a little bit harder to tell, while I was testing, helicopters were still being revealed to me up to 400 meters away, and while I can't tell 100% for sure where that reveal range ends, I would imagine that it ends at 450 meters, which is the maximum range of the G84 missile. As for what the game considers to be injured enough for the vehicles to be highlighted for you, the vehicle needs to be at or below 80% health, and as soon as the vehicle elapses that mark, their outline will be hidden from you. And that's all there really is to Liz, some quirky things with her launcher, but other other than that, pretty straightforward. Okay, with that out of the way, now I want to go over some of my problems with Liz as a specialist and explain why I think despite some community outcry, she is actually pretty balanced to the extent of her actually being quite a weak specialist, and stick with me here because I've got a bit to say. I think a good place to start would be to say that I think Liz has a very unique problem in which it feels like her ability was designed for and around the meta that was in Battlefield 2042, like 
three updates ago. Because in her design, she is supposed to be a huge thorn in the side to vehicle players. She is a vehicle hawking specialist, and I would imagine that in a meta in which there were three bolts running around the map at any given time causing havoc everywhere, a TV missile would be extremely strong and would be a fantastic counter to the vehicle spam meta that we had a few updates ago, but that's not the meta that we have currently. And I think that's where Liz is already at a huge disadvantage. By now you'll notice that I swapped that background footage over to an orbital game and I'm doing this for a specific reason. In this game I was trying my best to play Liz as intended and I was absolutely hunting this player in a wildcat. I noticed him camping on a hill and said hey that's perfect for me. I can get to him with my missile as opposed to launching prayers at him with a recoilless launcher but as I continued to try and kill him I noticed a few things. The first of which being that despite landing nearly every rocket that I fired at him, I was still not doing enough damage to him by myself to finish him off, and I would fire my two rockets, hit both of them, and by the time I had reloaded my two rockets again, which would take roughly 40 seconds, he would be right back to almost full health, and keep in mind that the Wildcat is a 4 hit kill with just the missiles alone, so I really wasn't that close to killing him. The second thing that started happening was that after hitting him a couple of times, he started keeping an eye out for my rockets, and he started just shooting my missiles out of the sky before they even got to him, so now my missiles weren't even landing on him unless he was distracted by some Something else, and this guy wasn't doing anything special to avoid me otherwise. I mean, he was completely stationary, he was playing like a complete rat. I think even at one point he put Irish Sentinel systems around his vehicle, but my point being, this guy was not a world class tank player or vehicle player. This was your average to below average player camping on a hill in the back of the map and I still was not able to out DPS him with my rockets by myself. And even though I was clearly annoying this player, it was clear that I was not really a threat despite getting a hit on him nearly every time. By the end of the round, I ended up giving up because I felt so useless and I felt that there were better ways that I could help my team instead of attacking a wildcat in the back of the map, and that's just with a single wildcat. On the list of target prioritization, this is an easy one to go for. Don't even get me started on trying to take out a super hind, which going back to my comments on how the meta does not favor Liz, if I couldn't out DPS a camping wildcat, there is no chance in hell that I out damage a super hind by myself. I was in an exposure game where I spent about 3 minutes straight launching missiles at the super hind and he was just eating the rounds in my face, hovering over the objective, and I hate to break it to you all, but that's going to be a common sight from now on. With only one attack and transport vehicle being allowed on the battlefield, you are going to see a lot of the Super Hind and Condor. Now you might be saying, well Catalyst, these were all just circumstances because your team didn't really give you any help, to which I would say to you, exactly. My team wasn't helping me, and for all the big talk about how Battlefield is a team game and squad play is the key and it's all about the team, we all know that at the end of the day, our blueberries oftentimes ain't worth shit. And because of that, I think that a specialist that relies upon teammates so much will never be strong. One or two Liz's scattered around the map will be relatively ineffective, but a whole squad or two of them and Liz may become a nightmare. And I think that once the new content settles down a bit and people start to realize how mid she actually is, I think the overwhelming threat of Liz rocket bombardment will go away and she will transform into what I see her as, which is a very weak specialist, to the point where I would go as far to say that you can accomplish everything that you can accomplish with Liz on another specialist with a recoilless. I actually lump her into the same category as I have Rao, a specialist that is extremely annoying for the type of player it's countering, but past all the bluster, isn't particularly strong. The only difference is that with Rao, the Trojan hacking network is very quick to use and you can set it and forget it and be useful across the battlefield. But with Liz, you have to not only avoid your rockets getting shot out of the air, but you also have to make sure you hit your target, which depending on the vehicle that you're going for may be difficult or it may be easy. If it's a tank, it's probably going to be easier than a heli that's diving and swerving everywhere. And in addition to that, the meta of the game is vehicles that all require multiple hits. 
Also, you cannot move when you are using the TV missile, so you are very vulnerable. And, you know, after a while, I just got sick of playing off the objective and tickling vehicles with my rockets. I felt useless and unproductive and like I was wasting my time. And yeah, thanks for coming to my Liz TED Talk. Now, after all of that, if you still want to play Liz, here is how I suggest you play her. I think that as much as she feels like she should be the hammer when it comes to anti-armor specialists, she really needs to be more of the dad than anything else and I think that that should reflect your playstyle and you should play around your passive ability more than you should play around using your rocket launcher a ton. I felt much more productive as a player when I wasn't focusing on vehicles and I was playing the objective getting kills and helping my team. Now I'm not saying that you should completely ignore vehicles. If a super hind is farming your team you should absolutely send a rocket its way and give it a smack on its side so hopefully it flies away but what I am saying is is that you should not hyper focus on destroying enemy vehicles and use the G84 when the moment arises. That way you always have ammo and you can be quick as possible when you see a really injured vehicle as opposed to firing your last rocket at a condor and then seeing a one shot tank across the map being like well I'm on a 20 second cooldown so there's nothing I could really do. And I also think that this lends you to being creative with your rocket for example. I was playing against Gravity yesterday when finishing my testing on Liz and if you don't know him Gravity uh, I think Gravity Eight is how you say the name, is a YouTuber and Battlefielder that has been playing all the way back since 1942. He's a good player, he's very knowledgeable, and we were playing on the new map, and I saw him in one of the really tough McKay grapple spots above the center mountain objective on exposure. I had the ammo, so I shot a rocket out of the building, and I looped it all the way back around to direct impact him and kill him, which was pretty good, because he was farming my team. So you can get creative with the rocket, but to summarize, I think the best way to play Liz is to play as if the rocket launcher doesn't exist until you absolutely need it to. Contribute to your team in every other way possible, and when you see the opportunity such as a fleeing tank on low health due to your passive ability, that's when you use the G84 missile and try to get the killing blow. You know, like, there's no escaping me <laughs> type of energy. Because Liz is a mostly guaranteed hit up to 450 meters. That is a long distance. So it's much more accurate than a long read long range rather recoil a shot be the dagger not the hammer as for what I would suggest for her loadout, I would suggest running the brand new BSVM. I think that it matches up really well with Liz's playstyle. It allows you to be long range when you need to be, but also allows you to play close quarters to get closer to vehicles when you need to as well. I would suggest using the hybrid 1.5-3 sight. It is the one with the ACOG and the red dot built on top of it, so you can toggle between a longer range scope and a red dot sight, which is nice. I would recommend the BCG grip and the short barrel, and I would run it with high power extended mag and close combat rounds in reserve. As for the gadgets I would recommend running on Liz, I would recommend the C4 as it pairs nicely with her passive ability and it makes up for the lack of anti-armor damage that you would be doing otherwise since you're not going to be doing or using your rocket as much. In combination with that, I would also say that Liz is one of the few specialists that I would recommend running ammo on since the BSV runs out of ammo quite quickly, especially if you are using close combat rounds. And lastly, I would recommend smoke grenades. I tend to always recommend smoke grenades because I find that nobody really runs them and they can be very, very useful for anti-tank oriented specialists. As always, I suggest other compatible specialists to run along with this specialist if you are in a squad with friends. For Liz, I would suggest Angel, Sundance, and Cap for our suggested loadout since we are using the BSVM, I would recommend Angel for the ammo that he provides. With Sundance, I think this is a good specialist to pair with Liz as a 1-2 combo. Liz with her long range rocket and Sundance who can fly out to the vehicle with her wingsuit and finish the vehicle off or vice versa. And lastly with Casper, his recon drone can spot enemy vehicles far away so he can relay information to Liz so she can fire the rocket and get some damage out. And yes, the C5 drone is still in the game. So so Liz can call out a winged tank and Casper can go and see 5 drone it, but who knows if and when this will be patched. Frankly, it should have been patched months ago, but we'll just have to see. Normally at the end of the video of the series, I rank the specialist in both Conquest and Breakthrough in comparison to other specialists in the game, but today we aren't going to do that because I am going to be making a separate video ranking all the specialists since a lot of them have received some changes and updates in the last few months and it is probably a good time to re-rank them with some new specialist power rankings, so be on the lookout for that video coming soon. 
That's the end of this video though, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you found this video useful and enjoyed your time here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and leave a comment if you made it to the end of the video. What do you think of this new specialist? It all helps me tremendously in the algorithm. If you enjoyed it just that much, you should consider subscribing. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Catalyst and I will see you all another time.